Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from me, Guy Munson, to our regular six minute strategy summary. The US Federal Reserve raised interest rates by 75 basis points, or three quarters of a percent, last night, showing a newly found determination to confront US inflation running at 8.6%, a 40 year high and rising. In his press conference after the decision, Fed Chair Powell indicated that he might move again by 75 basis points in July, citing stronger food, gasoline, and rental costs. So what's behind this new hawkish central bank stance and the determination, if you like, to get ahead of the curve? Well, there's little they can do about the supply side of the economy. Food and oil prices are largely determined by events in Ukraine. Supply chains around the world are still fragile, and the labor market is exceptionally tight. So they have to deal with demand and bring down levels of activity. And that probably means triggering a mild recession. Let's see what this means for markets and for your portfolio in the slides ahead. So let's look at that Federal Reserve in a little more detail in the first slide. Chairman Powell was clear in the press conference that followed that his mandate was for inflation in the widest sense. And that means he cannot ignore gasoline and food prices and shelter prices even in the short term. That suggests to us he'll move again hawkishly in July, possibly another 75 basis point rise. That will take rates by the summer to around 2.5%, the neutral level he's indicated, and up to somewhere between 3.5% and 4% at peak in 2023. In terms of the economic consequences, he obviously can't forecast a sharp pickup in unemployment. That would be politically unacceptable, but that is the direction of travel. Fourthly and finally, he's going to target demand rather than supply. There's little he can do about those supply chains and price pressures from his position at the Federal Reserve. So what are the consequences for the wider world economy? Well, I'm afraid the awful truth is that in the developing world, economic crisis is already a reality. In the left-hand panel, I've shown the rising number of people in acute food insecurity or deep poverty that was already rising through the pandemic and could rise by a further 75 million, according to the World Bank, in the months ahead as the war affects food and gasoline prices. A really terrible story. In terms of sovereign spreads in the emerging world, look at that ballooning of spreads for commodity importers as their balance of payments weakens. And look on the right at the high levels of total debt in developing markets and world economies. In short, emerging world total indebtedness is at a 50-year high, close to 60% of the poorest countries in the world already in debt distress. We forecast what will need to be a major global bailout of many emerging world countries. In the Western world, the key factors will be the rise in food and crude oil costs. And as I said earlier, that's largely dependent on the war. Some slightly better news on global supply chains on the right. You can see that index from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York beginning to ease a bit. But this is still a long journey, and it's not anything that central banks can really do to help those fragile supply chains. Thirdly and finally, the key issue for many inflation rates is, of course, a wage price spiral and this extremely tight labor markets. We looked at this chart before, but look at the number of employed in the US in, the US in red at 5.5 million and the number of job openings at 11.4 million, two to one, never seen in history before. So this is what Powell has really got to target. He's got to bring down that demand for jobs and get those job openings closer to the level of unemployment if he's really going to get on top of inflation. A similar message for Governor Bailey at the, Senate, at the Bank of England. Look at those UK unfilled job vacancies, the highest in recorded history. So put that all together and what's the economic scenario and outlook and the trajectory for US interest rates? We have three scenarios. Our most likely is scenario one, an early recession by NQ4 2022, as the Fed deliberately aims to increase unemployment enough to create slack in the labor market and put lower pressure on wage rates. Scenario two, inflation turns out to be much stickier than expected. There's a higher neutral rate, a higher peak in interest rates, and this really hurts markets going forward and is, of course, a real threat for asset prices. Scenario three, not our core by any sense, of the, uh, by any sense but a real risk I think we have to consider, and that's that the world economy is much more sensitive to interest rates than we expect, and if you like, falls apart sooner than we expect. It could be an emerging market crisis, it could be a crypto crisis, it could be a shadow banking crisis. We've got to watch for this. So what does this mean for asset prices? Well, this is our familiar chart 
of asset price performance for the year to date. And you can see that bear market in everything, that wide range of assets falling continues. UK gilts down 15%, world equities down 20%, NASDAQ down 30%, Bitcoin down or more than 50%. And that US dollar index continuing to rise, putting huge pressure on funding costs and inflation in the rest of the world. So against that backdrop, what's our strategy? We do see some hope for stabilization. We see better than expected earnings still coming through from some of our companies and particularly strong dividends. But as you can see, scenarios two and three argue for caution. So for the current time, at least, we're remaining overweight cash, overweight alternatives, underweight risk assets like equities and double underweight areas that will be affected by higher than expected interest rates, namely the bond market. Well, I hope that's helpful and gives you some perspective for your own portfolio. Thank you.